Hey guys. Hey Dark Lord Minute. Hey Teresa. How are you guys doing? Oh my goodness. I don't know where uh I don't know how you guys are doing, but we went from 60 degrees to I think today, right now we're at like 90, right at 90 degrees is what they're expecting our high to be. Oh, I know you guys, thank you for coming over. Um, we'll wait for a few minutes, but, um, yeah, it got so hot, you know, we, I got a bunch of yard work done and, um, I got a whole bed cleared out way faster than I thought it would be. Um, last, well, I finished it, um, Sunday afternoon. I wanted to go live again, um, to show it, or maybe it was Saturday. I wanted to go live again and show it. And then it got too hot and too sunny. Um, but we did go get uh, four tomato plants and they're like five feet apart and they need to be, but don't you ever feel like a, you and you have like a big bed and you only have four plants cause they're tiny, just like you need more stuff, you know, you need more plants. So I guess we'll see what happens, but, um, we are going to get some seeds started in the house for dill. Uh, because this year I want to have my own dill in our dill pickles, but we'll pick the pickles somewhere else because we don't have enough land to grow that many pickles to make pickles, cucumbers. Hey, Farm Fresh, how are you today? Um, so Teresa, tell me, have you, have you planted anything? Are you uh, great guns yet or is your weather still a little, oh, Oh my gosh. Yes. That's awesome. I think we'll probably end up with about 12, um, which will probably be enough. I don't know about you, but I need to have like four cherry tomato plants with all different colors and everything with plenty of room around them so that we can go out and snack on them while we're gardening. There's just nothing like that. Hey, Dale and Nana, how you doing? I want to listen to your and watch your podcast video today. It was very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. See, we did not do, um, we didn't do our seedlings because it kept raining and raining and raining and we weren't sure when we would put them out. So we moved the shelf that we were going to use to start indoor seeds. And here we are. Luckily, um, a local nursery that, I mean, even, even the plants, the starts that you can buy, everything's local. And we went over the other day and we were able to get um, the four inch pots for my, hold on one second. JJ, how much were the plants? Like four, three, three, three dollars a piece? Like 350, 349, something like that. 350, 349, something like that. But the beauty of that is that, um, Hey, Renee, the beauty of, um, of those prices and everything actually is that it is affordable and I know it's expensive because, you know, you pay three, about three to $4 a plant, but when you look at the price of vegetables per pound, okay, I just paid for, uh, maybe one pound of tomatoes and hope to get about 20. <laughs> so I'm okay with it. Ah, yes. Um, Hey, Elaine, how you doing? I'm going to be showing a picture from Elaine here in a few minutes. If I, I'm on JJ's computer, so you might have to bear with me. I've got the laptop in the background with Rocky back there, Rocky the rooster. Um, anyway, sun gold cherry tomatoes. Um, that is exactly one. That's one of the two cherry tomatoes that we planted. Um, we put them in. We did. We ended up putting them in Monday after war, after JJ got off work. That's one of um, his very favorites and mine too. And then the other one that we, we, it was mislabeled the last time we got it. And it's one of my favorites is the yellow pear cherry tomato. They are so sweet and it sounds funny, but they're easier. <laughs> they're easier to find like sun gold in the summertime when your plants full. So much, so much easier to find those. And then the other two plants that we put in, one was a Cherokee purple. Um, it's an heirloom variety, and if you have never grown or eaten a Cherokee purple tomato, you need to do that this year. Make it a priority. Um, they grow great. Thank you, guys. Um, they grow great um, 
from seed. Just maybe put a couple three in just to be sure you get them. And then the other one we did, and I have seeds for these, but they had them already started. So we wouldn't have had and picked one up is a Berkeley tie dye tomato. I need to get, you know what I really need to do, you guys? I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. Not sure. I'm going to try and get really fancy here on my little channel. Let's see if I can go find some images of them and share them with you. That would be kind of cool. Um, yellow pear tomatoes. Oh, you really should. You really should try them. I think that you'll be very pleased. There's another one that we like, too, that's like a, um, it's like a dark almost purple cherry tomato and they're super sweet. So I really like those too. They're black cherries. Black, black cherries. Oh, good. JJ's listening to me. Black, he is the tomato crims. king. Black crims too. Oh, and black crims. But that that's a full-sized heirloom. That's a good, if you want, honest to goodness, you guys, like a steak-sized tomato and put some microgreens. I, I sent a picture of this to, um, to Renee one night. We had um, tomatoes, and, and it was an heirloom that I bought at Whole Foods, but we sliced it up and had um, wasabi microgreens on top of that, a little bit of goat cheese, um, a dark, like a syrupy balsamic vinegar. There's there's one that I just love, and um, I'll, I could put a link in it if you guys want to see it, because you can just order it on Amazon. Um Oh, I got to see this picture. <laughs> send it, send it. Good, Dale. Thank you. Um, let's see. Brandywine tomatoes. We like those too. But um, yeah, if you slice them up, well, I'm going to finish my story because I always chase a squirrel. Um, if you slice them up and put the microgreens, the feta cheese, or if you can find the chevre, C-H-E-V-R-E. -E. It's like a goat cheese, but it's really mild. That's super good. That's a big treat. And then the balsamic. And then um, I think that's all I put on it. And um, you could almost make a dinner out of that. It's an excellent salad. Okay. And um, and if you send it, yeah, send it to my email. Thank God I'm on JJ's computer because the laptop, I have to go all kinds of places. So I'll watch for it. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can't go get an image. For you. Does everybody love Google as much as Michelle does? It's my favorite thing besides YouTube. <laughs> Let's see here. Images. Okay, now remind me what I was going to look for because that's how fast I forget what I'm doing. Um, while I'm kind of doing that, let me go see if I can get Let's see if I can get this picture that Elaine sent. Last week we were talking about different berries because we're kind of trying to um, – hold on a second. Let me see if that new – now, gosh darn it. Okay. I'm going to go in a different way, Elaine, because I really want to show this video or this uh, picture that you sent. We have a network, but we don't always connect with each other in the same house. I love technology. Uh, let's see here. Okay, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna belabor it too much, but I am still gonna keep looking. right he has email too there we go i just don't want elaine's personal information to go out there that's the biggest thing be patient and i'm not even looking at you guys so that's even more rude <gasps> okay I, while we're doing this, while I'm in here searching and looking like a goof, um, what is everybody having for dinner tonight? We got uh, avocados on sale Monday at a local store, five for five dollars with a limit of ten. So I bought ten, and we have been on an avocado kick. 
But tonight we're going to have guacamole and I'm just going to make homemade nachos so that it's kind of easy after this and it's kind of hot. So I'll make it, it'll make it nice. Okay. Now I'm going to keep trying a little bit. Okay. And I'll take that down. So Dark Lord Minute. Your mother already killed four tomato plants. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, well, good luck. I mean, there's still plenty of time. I think we all get super excited in the spring. And then, you know, and then some of those plants tend to kind of fizzle out in about the middle of the summer. So I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach this year and um, not plant as many plants, but um, like our squash. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait until probably mid-May, which is very unusual but I am going to wait a little bit because I think that at the end of the day in our area, I don't think that it will make that much of a difference for what we end up getting um, throughout the season. And if they start to look wonky in like late July, early August, I am not opposed to ripping those out and putting new plants in and uh, getting some, some fresh plant blood in there. Uh, the farms do it, so we might as well. And for people who are newer in here, I am a, um, we live in the suburbs, so we don't, we don't have tons and tons of property. I think we have about hmm, maybe a thousand square feet for gardening. So we just have beds here and there. Our biggest bed is 15 by 50. So I think for, for most people on a homestead, that's probably small beans. And then we have a lot of little peripheral uh, things and, and beds for different things too, to keep them in check. Blackberries are on their own separate area. Raspberries are in their own separate area. The pomegranate is the king of the backyard, the queen of the backyard, I guess. And, um, and we just planted a row of blueberries, we planted nine and Eight of them look really good. One of them looks a little unhappy, but we're going to try and baby it along. And if it doesn't make it, we'll just uh, replace it next year, that one plant with that one variety. And we'll see um, what happens. We can't eat the blueberries this year anyway. We have we stripped some <laughs> and some other critters stripped the others. Um, so I guess when you let them go for a full year without... Um, a full year without fruiting, it'll give more energy to the plant itself. Just like when you plant a bell pepper or any kind of peppers. And as, as hard as it is, you, JJ has to like smack my hand every time, but you have to pull the first blooms off so that you can get a stronger plant for the whole thing. Okay. Let me go into my email now. Cause I think I have a picture to share. Let me see. Let me update it. Do I need, I need technical assistance here and he's not around. There we go. Did you just send it suburban hillbilly? been a it's been a tr truly challenging week i'm telling you <laughs> okay now i've got my dates backwards that's why i'm not seeing it suburban hillbilly i am if did you send it to big valley living at gmail.com darn it hey grammy jan how you doing Oh, there we go. There we go. I got it. Thank you, ma'am. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I've got to get this present. Let's see if I can do this without presenting absolutely everything. I'm going to detach it to the desktop. Here we go. 
That is, you guys, you're going to die laughing when you see how gigantic this Cherokee purple is. But this is a true representation. Here we go. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. It's right in front of me and I just want to get it over to you guys. Anybody got any help for me? And he can't hear me. He's in the other room, probably watching a basketball game. Sacramento Kings are playing um, Golden State Warriors. I'm a little, I'm going to have to go with the hometown team, but if they don't win tonight, Golden State's going to move on. Okay, share screen. I want to just let me share this. Let's see, tell me guys if you see anything, okay? Because this is just really new to me. Trying a new layout. Shift S. I don't like Microsoft. I'm going to say it out loud. I don't know, you guys. I'm so sorry. I will be. Oh, share one item. Now I'm in Outlook, so I'm trying. Hey Nana, I'm struggling. I'm on the I'm on the computer struggle bus. That's why I need a podcast. I'm telling you right now, man. Okay. Um, I was telling Dale, you guys. I just I just this should be so stinking easy. But the only things it's allowing me to share is um, YouTube, which I don't want. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna figure this out though because Elaine sent a picture, and I will. I will practice later um, with somebody. Renee, I might call you. <laughs> but um, anyway, a Cherokee purple. The fruit honestly gets to be like you could hold it in two hands. It is so big, and they're really really great tomatoes for slicing or. Um, if you make homemade tomato, I like when I make a homemade tomato soup, um, I like to use like as many varieties as I can because you get all kinds of different flavors and notes in there. And, um, uh oh, Dark Lord Minute. Dark Lord, I hope everything's going to be okay. Oh, Grammy Jan. Okay, so you, you say that brandy wine is easier for peeling. We normally get um, our tomatoes for canning because of the sheer quantity that we do. We usually go to a local farm and we we pick it for a certain amount of money. We get it, I think it's like 40 cents, 42 cents a pound. And you can pick exactly what you want. And there's there's just no way that I would grow enough where we are to have our own. And I'm not quite sure what the... Um, Besides Romas, I know that they have Romas over there, and I don't even know the specific type. Um, but the rant, the red tomatoes, what I'm going to call the standard tomatoes, are pretty darn good, and the skins peel, so they may they may be brandy wines. Um, okay, so what is everybody having for dinner tonight? Because I'm not going to keep you long at, at this point. I'm still going to mess around here, you guys. I'm going to still mess around, try and share. Might as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't make spaghetti sauce? I just make plain tomato sauce 
we peel our tomatoes, we roast them for, for 48 hours and it gets super really rich and um, thick and I never make enough. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry about your mom. Um, 20 gallons of tomatoes. That's a lot. And I've heard that they make fabulous, fabulous um, juice too. If you freeze them, that you get a lot more juice out of them. So that's pretty cool. Hey, JJ, yeah. can you come here for a second? Let's see if he can yeah. help me. He's good at this kind of stuff. Um, and yes, we had, oh God, I love salad. Do you have lettuce yet where you can go out and pick it? Do you know how I can get this to show here? I did that. Yeah. Present. Uh -huh. and then, um, Say hi, JJ. Hi, JJ. And then share screen. Uh huh. And then, um, oh. So hold on. There. Yeah. There you go. See, I just needed him. That suburban hillbilly sent that. That is a Cherokee purple. And um, can I do like this? Hey, I like that. Okay. Yeah, that is one heck of a tomato. And thank you for so, uh, sending that. Uh, Nana says, hello, JJ. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. You know, um, that... to your business. Uh, thank you so much. You want to start the hamburger? I'm just kidding. I'm the game, sorry. Oh, I knew I was watching the game. Told you guys. Um, I'm going to just leave that up because that is such a beautiful tomato. Um, we, okay, Grammy Jan, we grew... Our, I don't know if you did the one like where you're buying the live lettuce... And that's what we've done. And I I just had another salad. So now we're on round four of one of those butter lettuces that we actually get at Costco in a two pack. One didn't make it uh, through all of our rainstorms and the wind and everything, but the other one took off like gangbusters. So, um, and then to what Suburban Hillbilly said about um, almost too hot for lettuce, we had um, all of our Swiss chard bolted literally in the course of one day the other day. And uh, I'm going to pull the lettuce that we have right now out of the wine barrel and I'm, I'm, I'll let it go, but I'm pretty sure it's going to bolt. And I think if it does, well, I think before it does, I'm just going to go ahead and throw some radishes in there and um, maybe some beets as well. Beets will grow here if I have a shady enough spot year round. So that's super cool. <gasps> Oh my goodness, they are millionaires in the egg world. You guys are having breakfast burritos. That sounds like a good idea. I like to do the same thing. Yeah, you just make make something for the future, but have that when you're cooking. It's a way to go. And oh, wow, the core only and rooted in water. I'm going to try that. I went through our... Um, microgreen drawer today. Um, we tend to grow microgreens in the summertime because it's too hot here to grow lettuce and, and other greens like that that are tender. So I went through the microgreen drawer and took stock and um, my favorite bike, well, I like a lot of microgreens because they, they all do kind of taste like what they would be if they were a full size plant, just not quite as strong. But my favorite thing is um, a mustard green that is, it's wasabi. And when you grow it, it's super tender, like a, um, like an alfalfa sprout compared to those really thick bean sprouts. And um, it tastes like an alfalfa sprout until right at the end. And then you just get this tiny bit of like a, a warm tingle. It's, it certainly is not hot like wasabi would be if you, you know, just took a spoonful of wasabi or anything. And then I'm going to, on the, in the other tray, um, we're going to do radishes and it's like a deep red radish. So that has a bite to it too. And that's, that's kind of how we get our greens in the summertime. But when I was in the drawer, we have peas, sunflowers, sunflower sprouts are really good. And so are peas. And those tend to be a little larger and they take about two weeks to, from start to germination, it's about two to three weeks for the bigger ones. For the wasabi and the radish and your smaller seeds, um, or like a lettuce mix, um, 
it only takes like seven to 10 days from the time we sow them until the time we harvest. And we always do them indoors and we always do them under a grow light. Has anybody in here grown, um, grown any microgreens that way? Because I know a lot of people do it in a jar and it looks, I've never even tried it because it just looks way too intense and way too, uh, it, it uses a lot of time. So I think you have to rinse them two or three times a day. And I'm too much, I think of a germaphobe and I'm afraid I would, I would just, if I didn't get to them every day, I would be afraid of any kind of um, just germs or anything in there. So, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, me too. That's what we do. I, I do not mind gardening indoors and finding a warmer place for the plants under a nice little lamp. <laughs> hey, Angela, how you doing? Yeah, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. <laughs> but yeah, it is, um, when it gets too hot, I mean, no matter how much shade you give something and no matter, no matter how much you baby it, sometimes certain plants just aren't going to make it. Um, I honestly don't know how they grow iceberg lettuce in the desert of California and Arizona in the summertime. I, it just baffles me that they can even grow any kind of lettuce at all because it's way hotter down there than it is up here. Um, you really, I think you really, really should try some indoor growing when when I get the greens going, which um, now that there's a game tonight, I'm probably going to be taping it in the morning, to be honest. And I'm going to get it out there. Um, I'll show you guys the little light rig that JJ made up. It's pretty cool. He just got some pipe fittings over at a big box store. And it, I don't think they cost more than like $6. The biggest investment for us was the, um, the light that we got. And it's not very big, but it's, it's full spectrum. Um, doesn't take a lot of power. And when I consider the amount of greens that we can grow or the amount of starts that we can start in this very tiny space, it was definitely worth the investment. Oh, oh, is that how they do the lettuce out there? Because I've only driven by the fields. I've never seen like the gigantic any gigantic greenhouses, but to be fair, I've only driven across I-10 and I-8 maybe five times in my entire life. So they might've been there and I just didn't notice them. Um, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. But it's just been too hot here. And even if we, I have a shady, I have a couple of shady boxes by the blueberries and um, they do really good for radishes and beets in the summertime because they get morning light and then they get that nice afternoon shade. Um, it also worked well for artichokes in that same area. Oh, okay. So Suburban Hillbilly is actually talking about where she is. Okay. Yeah. Southern California just has these massive farms and um, Arizona does too. And so you're going along the freeway and you just see lettuce on both sides of the freeway, like as far as the eye can see. And they don't do much during the day, I think, except water. And then at night, that's when they harvest everything and they ice it down and they put it in trucks and off they go all over the country. It's kind of interesting to see it um, if, you, if you've never seen it. Um, but it's too far for me to take a trip down there and document it because I don't. <laughs> it's too hot down there. <laughs> we're like eight hours, nine hours away from San Diego and LA and stuff. So it's a different world and suburban hillbilly. So you're on the East coast and um, so your conditions are probably different than ours. And you've told me what zone you're in, um, but I can't remember, but we're in nine B. So I've grown, we've had mild enough winters here where I've actually grown um, spinach without any needing any kind of cover or anything for the whole winter. And um, we can generally grow tomatoes until Thanksgiving. 
But as soon as the nights start getting really, really cold, then the tomatoes lose their flavor and we end up just pulling them out. There's no point in it. Okay, so your Georgia between 7B and 8A were kind of similar then. That's not too different, but you probably get more freezing than we do. And um, I'm thinking, right? Because the higher you go up in the number, the less freezing you get. Um, we do have to cover our citrus almost every year and certain succulents have to be covered as well. Maybe 29, a, a really, really, really cold winter for us, we would have to cover our citrus and succulents maybe 30 nights throughout the entire time that we have frost. And this year we actually had frost in April and our last uh, average frost date is actually the very end of February. So it's been a cold year here. And then we are now in the 90s. Who knows? I wish you could do citrus too because it is such a delight. Um, I think next Wednesday I'm actually going to go out with my laptop and sit in the yard and or maybe I'll even do it on my phone and try and use the um, iPad and show you guys because we have two small lemon trees, maybe four feet tall, five feet tall. And then we also have a larger lime tree and a um, Myers lemon tree. Those are the sweeter ones. And they are all budding right now so much that when you walk out of our sliding glass door to go out to the patio, all you smell is like citrus blooms. It is so amazing. I really, really wish we could bottle that smell and send it to you. Tom Garvey. Yes, that's a heck of a tomato, isn't it? That is from Suburban Hillbilly. Isn't that beautiful? Um, that is a Cherokee purple, sir. And that is one of the best tomatoes in the whole world. Okay, and yeah, see... I feel so bad for you guys. We've talked about move, moving out of California because it's expensive and crazy, but I'm watching all these hundred dollar grocery challenges and everything else. We are all in the same boat. It doesn't matter where, even in Canada, I was just on uh, Angela's live and um, even in Canada, just everything is so expensive. I think part of it is shipping. I have an aunt who uh, owns a, company that um, puts truck drivers and stuff together with uh, loads companies. And she said it's almost impossible to find truck drivers because um, there just aren't enough out there. And I don't know how many of you have watched a lot of things that I've done, but I will tell you that I used to drive a semi and um, it was a blast. It was so much fun. And if I could do it again, I would, I would do it. And if you're like 50 eh, ish and you want to try something new, go see if you can get yourself a commercial driver's license. Cause man, you get to see all kinds of cool stuff. I loved driving. Um, but anyway, we've kind of seen all kinds of stuff and <clears throat> I guess I never paid attention to all the plants along the side of the road. Um, but it's kind of fun because in some areas like Washington state, and um, on the western side, west of the Cascades, and uh, Oregon, same way, but more up in Washington, you can drive along the freeway and see wild asparagus growing, and it's just magical. Or out in Kansas, all those, all those sunflowers, just everywhere. So I really enjoyed that. If you guys can take a road trip, do that. Um, and suburban hillbilly, the funny thing about California too, is that we have a million different climates here. Um, up on the North coast, they couldn't grow citrus any more than anybody in Michigan or Georgia. Although I'm surprised Georgia can't have it, uh, grow it, but, uh, it's just, um, I don't know. It's just really interesting to see all the different stuff. And I'm trying to think about what we used to see out in uh, like Tennessee and stuff. It was mostly grasses, I think. Um, I don't remember seeing a lot of farms in, in Tennessee, but we were on the interstate. So it was kind of hard to tell. And then you go up into the Midwest and stuff like up in Wisconsin and up in Michigan. And 
the far, I mean, you guys just get so much sunlight, you know, because you're so much further north than we are. So you have those super long days. We don't, our summers, um, let's see, the sun comes up sometime around 5, 5.30 in the morning. And um, in July, which is, you know, like the height of summer, right? We're, we're watching fireworks by 9.30, 9.45 at night. I've been up in Spokane in the 4th of July, and they only have like four or five hours of darkness at night. So it's very, very different. Let's see. You had a friend from California. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of where we are. Um, we're an hour and a half from the ocean. And we're an hour and a half from Lake Tahoe, which has fabulous skiing. Um, but when it gets super hot here, it's nice because if you have the time and you can, and you have the patience, um, you can just drive to the beach in a, in a few hours and get a little bit of respite. We like to go camping in the beach in the summertime and camp in the mountains um, in the fall before it starts snowing and Grammy Jan, I have no idea where you are in Michigan, but Oh my gosh, I, I don't envy that. Um, I was on Angela's live. There was somebody who got, they got snow in Colorado today. And um, I, uh, I like to be able to drive to the snow and come home or drive to the ocean and come home. But it's really nice. And I, you know what? As hot as it is right now here, I actually would love to have snow because um, I live here in the heat, but I don't like it. Oh, you're north of Detroit. I have a ton of relatives in Detroit. They're not on here right now, but I have a lot of relatives in that area. So um, are you in the UP or just, just a little north? <laughs> Snow here is um, something that we get thrilled about. We all go outside and take pictures before it hits the ground and melts because it's not normal to have it. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear that it melted quickly. But you still got it, and it still got cold. Um, so the other things, I'm going to tell you guys about our garden until, we, until next week when I can actually show you where we are and what's going on. Um, the apple tree is blooming. We have two apple trees. We have a uh, Granny Smith that we just planted and it actually got some buds. So we'll see what comes of that, but it's, it's a tiny guy. So I don't expect anything. And then we have like a 15 year old um, pink lady apple and um, it is loaded with buds right now. And I'm super excited. I'll probably put out another short with it because most of the buds are falling off now and the teeny tiny baby fruits are starting and they're my favorite. Okay. I have relatives right by you. That's funny. Um, I like highway 75, by the way, interstate 75. It's kind of a neat road from top to bottom, but what I was, I wanted to get back to this. I love being up like, especially in the Northern States or over like in Pennsylvania and parts of Ohio, there was something super magical about driving around and seeing the Amish farms and Mennonite farms and how organized and tidy they were. And at night, you know, it'd be so quiet and everything, not a lot of traffic. And I, I remember as you were driving past, like if you were like in a big Amish area, there would be, um, you know, there would literally be the candlelight in the window until somebody got home. I'm assuming it was, it was just awesome. Hey, hello, family adventurers. How you doing? Thanks for popping in. Um, we're just talking about gardening here. Does anybody have, uh, let's see, tell me what plants you that you do have in the ground right now and um you don't have to tell us like how big your property is i think that um i think tom and his wife um garden exclusively on um on your patio right and that's pretty i think that would be a challenge but i also think it would be an awful lot of fun 
I've seen a couple of your comments about <laughs> on your lives about having all those cups of things all over the place, but it's kind of fun to have all kinds of plants all covered and growing food and everything. I enjoy that. Oh, I doubt it. Um, I love Amish quilts too. I really do. I like, I like Amish furniture. Um, they, I remember just seeing so many neat things. One thing we were never able to do was stop in an Amish store. Um, but I also remember like being in Wisconsin, just outside of Amish country. And there was a place where we could pull our semi over. And it's the first place I ever tried uh, cheese curds and the squeaky cheese. And so I always associate that with Wisconsin. I guess I should. But it was pretty cool because they, they put dill in some of it and had all kinds of flavors. So good. Okay, now Elaine, I think, you know what? I think I'm going to be able to do this all by myself now. If I can go find your email and then I can put that up. So I'm still looking in here. Anybody have anything planted? Anything? Come on. There's going to be a big seed, uh, seed collab next year too. And I will put more particulars up there for you. Um, Tony at uh, Kettle Kitchen is actually gathering seeds and I will find out, like I said, I'll find out the particulars and put them out because I think a seed swap is a lot of fun. And I've sent seeds to a few friends in different areas. I sent some artichoke seeds to Michigan uh, and some um, um, the Berkeley tie-dye tomato seeds just to see how they do because it's kind of fun to just find out who can do what. Oh, we got potatoes. We didn't plant potatoes this year, but their uh, homegrown potatoes are so creamy and delicious. I love that. Okay, I'm going to go see. For some reason, um, our YouTube uh, shared files, JJ gets some and I get others. So they've got to be on a different drive with the same letter, not the same letter. Oh, well. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah I'm not finding that. Guys, I'm not good at flagging. Okay. I'm not going to do that. So let's see here. Your last frost date isn't until Memorial Day. That, okay, that is crazy. And I've heard a lot of people talking about like, um, like a fake spring. You guys kind of get stoked and get excited and then you get a frost. I think that happens a lot in the north. Um, the whole West Coast, though, seems to be very, very, um, we had a cool winter, but Oregon and Washington are really seeming to warm up a lot differently than than they did even 20 years ago. Uh, JJ and I used to live up in the Northwest and on the West side, and um, it is a lot warmer up there now when we talk to our kids because they still live up there, and when we talk to them... Um, they regularly now get into the hundreds. And when I lived in the Portland, Vancouver area, we rarely, rarely hit 95 to 100 degrees. I mean, you didn't even have to have an air conditioner in your house, kind of like San Francisco. It was just always temperate. Now it's not like that. This is exactly what happened to us, Grammy Jan, but it never left. <laughs> And so you're, are you cold in Utah right now? Or are you like in that really hot, you know, fake spring thing? I love Utah, by the way. I love all the states. There's every state has a cool thing, even Nevada. No offense if you're in Nevada. You just, you need more grass. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess, you know, we just all have to deal with our different weather, huh? Because it is changing. Yeah, our weather has changed a lot, but we are finally getting out of the, um, we're getting out of our drought. Uh, we still need a lot of groundwater to be replenished, but um, south, south and 
well, directly south of us, but the southern Sierra Nevada, you know, well, all of the Sierra Nevada this year got record snowfall, which is fabulous. But now we have this hot spell and it's going to carry us and it's going to be here until like Monday. So while it's hot, it's still warm up in the mountains and all the water's coming down. And I was watching the news today at noon and there's going to be some significant flooding in the San Joaquin Valley. So the Sacramento Valley is up north and the San Joaquin Valley is south of us. It just depends on the river. But, um, but the combined were the big valley. And um, they're expecting some pretty significant flooding in Yosemite, in Yosemite Valley, and then all along the Merced River going into like Tulare County, which is low, low it's low lying before you go to the ocean. And um, they're already underwater. Man, they were showing, they were showing tractors and things. And you know how big tractor wheels are. A lot of you guys farm, so you really know. And um, the water was like already to the tops of tractor tires. And, and that's just water from like a month ago. There's nowhere for the water to go because they got rid of one of their dams. Um, and that one dam probably wouldn't have been able to hold it anyway, but I feel really bad for them. So pray for them. Okay. So in Utah right now, where you are in Utah, you are having 65 during the day. That's glorious but your nights are below freezing. So, um, and let's see here. So this is fun. I mean, cause Utah is only a 10 hour drive from us. Um, hello, Nevada. Right. And so Grammy Jan, you're in the eighties now freeze warning. Oh, see, that's crazy. Renee is in Michigan as well. And, um, now you're back in the forties. I absolutely would love to have to put on a jacket right now. So I'm a little bit jealous. That's coming on Monday. Yes, it's coming on Monday. Thank you so much. Are we winning? Um, our game's not started. <laughs> oh, our game hasn't started. He's watching other games. Um, oh, my gosh. In Kansas, you guys are in the upper 20s. It's probably, hopefully it warms up for you guys. And Suburban Hillbilly, we, I'm going to tell you, our snow usually comes in the form of hail. <laughs> um, I just found a picture the other day, and I think I went, and, I think I went and put it back in the album, in the picture album. But we had snow here in like 1976 or 77. And all of us kids in, in like a four, you know, four different yards. Uh, we all went out before school and we collected the snow and we collectively made a snowman that was probably eight inches tall. It was hilarious. And I found the picture, but that's actually the last snow on the ground that I can remember in Sacramento. So, you know what? Um, 20s at night, we didn't really even see much of that this year. It just, it was cold and rainy, but it wasn't, it wasn't crazy. Usually our drier winters tend to get colder at night. We can get down to like 19 or 20 for a couple of days, but for the most part, we might get four or five hours that are between 26 and 30. And then the sun will come out and it'll warm back up. So we are very lucky. So, um, but the twenties right now, Dale, Nana, is that normal for this time of year? I mean, do you, do you just expect, not expect it? Because that's just, that just blows my mind. It does just because I guess, cause you're further South than I would expect that to happen. And there's nothing like a slippery road either a slippery bridge. Big farms have corn planted and up already. So is that is that going to harm them? I know that sometimes we'll our almond farms will set buds and cherry cherry farmers and stuff will set bud, and then we'll get like a rainy period and it you know it rots the fruit before it can really form. 
So I'm wondering if all of that, all of that ice or the freezing weather would kill the plants and it's not out of the ordinary. And yes, I agree. Weather patterns are crazy. I went and got a, um, a farmer's almanac for this year just because I wasn't sure what to expect. And I started reading through it and um, it, it's just odd. It's just very, very odd. Um, but we actually, they showed today that there's um, a marine layer now laying off of the coast, the whole coast of California. So we should be getting some cooler weather in the next few days. And um, But if, if we see freezing weather again, um, that would just be really, really weird. We weren't, we're not going to get that. Okay. I figured that. But they'll still live, right? It'll just maybe stunt the growth or something. I love corn. <laughs> but that's feed corn mostly, right, Dale, Nana? I think it is. And Angela, do you guys plant corn? I mean, I know we've got some farmers and uh, homesteaders out here. Um, I watched, I watch your videos, but I never, I don't know why I get so excited whenever I see like a tractor. I don't even pay attention to anything else. I just lose my mind. I've never driven a tractor and I've always wanted to It'd be fun. <laughs> do you guys have gears in those or are they automatic? That is a serious question. Whoa. In the Wasatch, is that where the 900 inches? Let me see how much that, I don't think we got that much this year in the Sierra. Not even close. That's crazy. I'll look it up. Dr. Google. snowfall in the Sierras this year 360 and we have a ton of snow I cannot imagine 900 inches you guys are going to be snowing all you're going to be snowing you're going to be skiing all the way until like uh probably uh October that's pretty darn cool oh wait a minute that's our average let's see hold on Let's see. Come on now. We were 210%. Um, so I'm not getting the right page where I can tell you exactly. Um, Northern Sierra and the Trinity Alps, which are across from the Sierra, um, got 172% of normal. So that's probably what, 550, 600 inches. And then we got 211% in the central Sierra. So that again, 700 and what, 30 inches. So I guess we were close, but man, that is 900 inches is impressive. That's something out of the record books for sure. And then the Southern Sierra. So central and Southern is where I'm talking about where all that snow is going to melt and go into the central Valley and the Southern part of the central Valley. I just, oh my God, I just can't even imagine. And then it's going over the freeways and they're getting undermined. So it's going to be a hot mess for a minute here in California. But um, I hope the price of vegetables doesn't go up for any of us. I'm going to tell you right now. And hey, Cindy, how you doing? How you doing up there in Canada? We're talking weather kind of right now. Um, both gears are automatic transmission. Okay. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, it is. Good golly. Oh, my goodness. That is just so much. So now I need to know, um, is it affecting you guys like with the runoff? Like, you know, what I was just talking about here, is that affecting your runoff or any of the freeways or anything? Or is everything still passable? We also, like in the Sierras right now, we have um, smaller, like two-lane highways, like US 89 and 88, 
um, which are kind of like, um, they kind of surround like Tahoe in a way. And then they go all the way down to, um, they go on the east side of the Sierras down to um, Mono County and stuff um, on the east side of Yosemite. Um, those highways are still like, they don't even know when they're going to be able to open them because there's nowhere for the snow to be blown when they clear the highways. So let's see if I can get some footage for y'all and share it with you. Okay. Thanks, Dale. See, we're just learning. I'm going to have you guys come on one time on one of my lives, if you don't mind, um, like Angela did, because I love hearing about the farming. I'm, we're never going to do it now, uh, but I will live vicariously through the farmers and support you in any way I can. And then, so it's cold there, but it's dry. Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually just put like big straws across the country when we all need it or when we need to divert it? I would love that. So um, it's really been fun visiting. It is probably late for most of you. It is um, almost six o'clock here. And um, I just really want to thank you all for coming in. Next week, I am going to... Um, I'll have some details about the seed swap for you, more details. And I will also take you out to our garden and show you where we are in our garden at that point. Oh, yeah. See my hair? When you say muggy and humid and all that, um, when I am in any kind of rain, um, my hair just like turns into a little tiny, little tiny afro. So I like my dry weather. <laughs> Thank you. That is exactly what we're going to do. So um, I'm just going to do our little sign off here. See you later, everybody. Be kind. Oh, look, I'm wearing my be kind shirt. Be kind. <laughs>